sins get on the wheel and I pulled up and asked him what was going on I said buddy I know just how you feel cause I've been there wasn't that long ago if I learned anything Get you gotta get that on the road. Don't slip the small stuff. Well, time and a little love. And everything has a way to work it out. It won't take too long. If you just hold on, be strong when time gets up. You days later feeling sorry for myself Thoughts of giving up are running through my head If I've learned anything, if you gotta get back on the road, don't slip the small stuff. Well, time and a little love. Everything has a way of working out. It won't take too long. If you just hold on, be strong. When things in life don't work out like you planned, just keep the faith and trust your fellow man. Don't sweat the small stuff, but time and a little love. Everything has a way of working out. Praise God, praise God. You were listening to our friend Kevin Wilson from London, Kentucky. He's a good old guy, a good old guy from a uh, good country guy from London, Kentucky. And um, we met Kevin last year, Jackie and I. Man, what a great guy. Kevin um, gave me some of his CDs and said, hey, Pastor Carter, he said, you have my permission. You have my permission to play these. You, you play all the songs you want. You've got my permission. So we play this with Kevin's permission. And he said, don't sweat the small stuff. Well, this is March 1st. It's March already. Praise God. It might not feel like it in some places because several people are sick and got colds and all this. And uh, Jackie's home today. She's in bed. So pray for her. Pray for her healing. You know, God gives us rest. And, and praise God that he ministers to us in those times of rest. I took a day and a half this week and confined myself to the bed and worship God from the bed. You know, there are times when you, we've got to just learn how to wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Wait on the Lord and he will strengthen our hearts. One thing we know is this, he is Jehovah Rapha. 
He's the Lord who heals, and he keeps his promises. So we pray for Jackie today that she waits on the Lord. Pray for Melanie Bias. Pray for Wes. We pray for Kevin Wilson. We pray for the body of Christ and for all of you who are live with us today. And we pray for those who are listening to the recordings. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank God for what he's doing with these recordings of these messages. Not only are they, go are they going out via email and on YouTube and on Facebook, uh, but they're also on our web page. And I get, re uh, get reports from people. Just this week, a lady sent me a thank you for preaching a message about building a hedge of thorns. Now, that was some time ago when I preached from Hosea and building a hedge of thorns, and, and this uh, particular lady said she wants her husband back, and she's going to bring him back by building a hedge of thorns based on the prayer she learned in that message. Ladies and gentlemen, continue to pray for this ministry that God will anoint this ministry. It's a yoke breaking ministry. A lot of people don't don't want to hear this kind of stuff. They hey, they want to see the, the 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 big band and the praise dancers and hear the choir sing two or three selections and then watch the uh preacher uh gyrate and sweat and strain from the pulpit. But we just we just sit here in front of the camera and and we're the pipe that God blows through. Whichever way the Holy Spirit wants to blow through me, he blows through me. And the messages are right on target. We're talking about yoke-breaking target uh, messages, ladies and gentlemen. Freedom uh, bringing messages where people are being set free. And, and, and praise God. I thank God for what the Holy Spirit is doing in the world today, in America, and in the church. Now, today's message, I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be tight. It's going to be tight. Now, if you don't want anybody messing with your American flag and all that, then you, you, you may not want to listen to this message. Or, uh, or, or if you don't feel like being challenged uh, uh, and, 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 and hearing some challenge to American Christianity, then you may not want to listen to this message. But the Lord said, blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm in my holy mountain. And I just, I'm just... I'm just foolish enough to believe the Lord God and do what he says do. Hallelujah. And I get excited. I get excited. I get excited about preaching the gospel. Hey, Melanie Bias, I get excited about preaching the gospel. Melanie, come and help us out. And would you please, dear, lead us in prayer. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. We thank you for this ministry. May you continue to bless it and bless all of us who who follow and listen in. We're grateful that you have uh, sacrificed your life for our salvation, and we look to you for leadership and guidance uh, in the way that we should live our lives and serve as examples for others. Um, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We thank God for you, Melanie, and uh, thank God for all of you who are with us today. And we praise God. We give honor to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we praise God. Uh, by the way, a little thing about Kevin Wilson. If you want Kevin's CDs, you can. Uh, here's a picture of Kevin, one of his CDs. Uh, send me an email, and I'll send you his contact information. Information. Praise God. Uh, we thank God for this ministry. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm seeing the Spirit of God move so mightily. I mean, it's, God is moving so mightily. Sometimes it's scary how, how, how much he's moving. You say, well, what's happening? Uh, I don't see anything going on. I ask God to take the blinders all, off of us. I ask God to help us to see what he's doing and watch him move and let him move and have his own way, and we're seeing great results now today, and we thank God again for your prayer. Melanie, we thank God for all of you listening. Uh, Elijah, over in Kenya, you all continue building that new church and, and, and furnishing it and, 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 and bringing people in and, and, and preaching the word of God and 
teach them about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And all of our friends, Abel Kaw in, in Cameroon, we know that nation is under great oppression, but you keep standing on the word of God and, 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 and telling people that Jesus Christ is the way. And all of our friends all across this nation and, and uh, other nations, stand up for Jesus. Stand up for Jesus. Stand against unrighteousness. Stand up for Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, we're living in a day where the church is apostate. Apostate mean, meaning that many have left the church. Many have left the church. Now, that does not mean they don't attend services anymore. They have left Jesus Christ, and they're gone out into the world. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no salvation if you turn back and go back into the world. The Bible says any man who put his, puts his hand to the plow and turns back is not fit for the kingdom of God. And God said he has no pleasure in those who turn back unto perdition. So you hang on in there, just like Kevin Wilson said in his song. He said, don't sweat the small stuff. Well, he says stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. Get back up. Get back on the go. Be strong when times get tough. Don't give up. Trust in the Lord. Don't sweat the small stuff. It's only small. It's only small. Ladies and gentlemen, difficult times have not yet come and have not yet come you may say well pastor now haven't you heard about this coronavirus yeah i've heard about it but god is bigger than coronavirus can you imagine ladies and gentlemen can you imagine church if 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 two or more of us got together and decided we're going to fast and pray and ask god to break this yoke of epidemic that has hit, hit the world, if two or more are, are, are found in his name, it does not yet appear what God shall do or what will happen. If, if the church will humble, oh my God, the word of God gives an answer to the, the uh, coronavirus flu, gives an answer to uh, 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 deception and lies. Can you imagine if the true uh, believers in America will humble themselves and pray and fast and, and declare uh, that, that we are tired of corruption in the government, we're tired of lies, we're tired of deception, and we want honest, holy, righteous government. Can you imagine what God can do if we pray? Now, ladies and gentlemen, God, I'm talking about, we're, ta we're talking revolution stuff today, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about revolution stuff today. We're talking about a Jesus revolution, a Holy Ghost revolution. Oh, I know some of you don't want to hear this because you're so, you're so comfortable with the status quo. Some of you got good jobs. You've got comfortable homes. You've got a nice cushiony seat in your uh, row in, in, in your church. You're on the deacon board, the trustee board. Some of you are even preaching. Some of you are bishops in the church. Some of you have leadership positions. Some of you are church leaders. So you don't want, hey, Pastor Carter, don't rock the boat. Don't rock the boat, Pastor Carter, because I'm comfortable. It took me a long time to get to where I am in the church. Ladies and gentlemen, it might have taken you a long time to get to where you are in the church, but being in the church is not where Christ wants us to be. He wants us to be in Christ. The body said, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. That means women too. If any person is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. You might have that nice, comfortable position in the church, but are you sleeping with the enemy? Uh-oh. Are you compromising? Uh-oh. Are you... Are you one who's perpetuating the lie? Are you helping to spread the deception and the delusion? Are you one of those pastors of the many, many pastors in America who are in the president's pocket? He's paying you off, and you're scared to preach the gospel? Uh-oh, Pastor Carter, you're talking some, well, some mean stuff today. You're talking some mean stuff. Look, the Lord said, blow the trumpet in Zion, and I'm going to blow the trumpet in Zion whether you like it or not. I'm going to be true to God. You see, it was God 
who reached down to my low estate many years ago and picked me up out of the slime, out of the slime pits of life, ladies and gentlemen, and, and, and breathed life into me and gave me the new birth through Jesus Christ. And it was God who changed my life and brought me to this place. And then it was God who called me to preach the gospel. Not you, not the, not the Methodists, not the Baptists, not the Episcopalians, not the Pentecostals. It was God who called me to preach the gospel. And so, therefore, I'm going to preach it whether uh, you like it or not. Uh, no Republican called me to preach the gospel. Uh, uh, no, Democrat, no Democrats appointed me to preach the gospel. I preach what thus saith the Lord, and I thank God, and the Holy Ghost is my backup. And I pray that I pray that you will be true to God. Don't compromise with sin. Don't sleep with the enemy. Well, all this is just uh, introduction uh, to our message. I know that was a long in introduction, and it's fired up. But I want to preach to you today a message that God laid on my heart. It's going to be tight, but it's going to be right. And the title of this message is, Let Us Rise Above American Christianity. Uh-oh. Let us rise above American Christianity. I'm going to say that one more time. You might want to write it down and remember this message because when you see things happening that are going to happen, you'll know that God sent this word. You'll know that the word is from the Lord. Let us rise above American Christianity. Father, we thank you once again. We praise you. We thank you for the anointing. We thank you for the privilege of preaching the gospel. We thank you, Father, for each one who's tuned in today and those who are listening to the recording. We thank you for what you're doing in their lives. Many are going through difficulties, Lord, but Lord, we know your hand is upon them. And I pray, God, that you'll keep each and every one. Lord, you said, blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust and respects not the proud nor such as turn aside to lies. God, keep your people. Keep them in perfect peace. Lord God, as things fall all around us, as things happen all around us, help us to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as we know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Praise God. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, let your word go forth. Let it go forth. Let it not return unto you void or empty. Praise God. We uh, are preaching today on this message, Let Us Rise Above American Christianity. Now, if you're, if you're a flag waver, and my flag, I, my flag flies out in my, in my uh, front yard every day, every day, all day long, every day throughout the year, my flag, I am an American citizen. I'm a former Green Bay, Green, Green Bay. I'm a former Green Beret, Green Bay Packer. I'm a former Green Beret, and, and I served my nation with distinction and with dignity and with honor and was honorably discharged from the U.S. Army, and I love my country. But, ladies and gentlemen, I do not worship my country. Come on now. I do not worship my country. I do not worship the flag. I do not worship uh, the Statue of Liberty. I do not worship uh, the White House. I do not worship the Capitol. I do not worship the Supreme Court building. I do not wor worship old, old Yeller or Yosemite Falls. I do not worship the Niagara Falls. I do not worship uh, those Purple Mountains majesty. I do not worship the fruit out on the plain. But I'm a, I'm, I'm a faithful, loyal American. But my faith, ladies and gentlemen, is in, in someone greater and bigger than America. And, and, and uh, you may be from a different nation, and, and you may com be compelled to do certain things in your nation, but do not worship your government. Do not worship your government leaders. And I know I've been in many African countries, and, and, and people, uh, uh, they love to uh, ask you for bribes in in Africa. If you want favor, you got to put some money in somebody's hand. Well, they ask for a lot of bribes here in America, too. They call it quid pro quo. They call it 
quid pro quo. They try to bribe you into doing certain things. And, and, and ladies and gentlemen, just uh, several weeks ago, we saw 52 United States senators, 52 United States senators uh, of the 100 U U U.S. senators, 52 of them, uh, we saw 52 who had put their left hand on the Bible and raised their right hand to God, and they solemnly swore before God. And ladies and gentlemen, after that uh, uh, trial, that election, I mean, that uh, uh, vote was taken in that impeachment process, we saw 52 hard-headed, hard-hearted people who did not care whatever way the President of the United States lives. He can do anything he wants. He can say anything he wants. We're going to stand by him no matter what. And ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you, you can worship your congressman. You can worship your president. And, uh, and, and a lot of you preachers out there uh, uh, are scared to preach the gospel. A lot of you preachers are scared to preach the gospel. You bypass certain passages of Scripture, and the Holy Ghost may lead you to a Scripture, and you refuse to preach on it because you don't want to offend the president. You don't want to offend your governor. You don't want to offend your bishop. But ladies and gentlemen, the day is coming. A day of reckoning is coming. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to get a copy of Stephen Matson's book. Stephen Matson's book is it, it's a good book. It's a good book called The Reckoning. The Reckoning. There's a reckoning coming in America. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't impress upon you how urgent this cry is now to get right with God. Get right with God. Get right with God and do it now. Tomorrow is not promised, ladies and gentlemen, and, and you can be the bishop of the church. You can have 250 uh, pastors under you. You can, have, you can be uh, the, the archbishop of an entire uh, region. You can be the pope and, and have nations under you. But if you ain't right with God, you're going to die and go to hell and bust hell wide open, and, and people are going to... Uh, 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 memorialize you, and a lot, a lot of folks are going to tell a lot of lies at your funeral and say this and that. But if you ain't right with God, what good is it if man if man acclaims you and proclaims you when you know that you know that you know that you're not not right with God? And so we're begging you to repent, repent, America, repent, church. The church of, in America needs to repent. We're going to take a look at the church in America today uh, for, for several minutes. And my subject, once again, is entitled, Let Us Rise Above American Christianity. In other words, Pastor, are you saying there's something above American Christianity? You mean there's something greater than what we're experiencing? And my answer to you is yes. Yes. You see, when I, when I gr was growing up, I mean, they taught us a lot of things, and I love my country, but they taught, taught my country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. And it is still, I believe, the, 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 the land where people have more freedoms than any other nation in the world. And, and that might just be one reason why we're in the state we're in. Because people have freedom and they do everything they want to do. America today is like Israel during the time of the judges. And the Bible says, and every man did that which was right in his own sight. Today, you can say anything. You can do anything. You can say it with whomever. You can do it with whomever. Ever. Ladies and gentlemen, today you can, a man can sleep with a man, a woman can sleep with a man, a woman, and a, 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 a man can sleep with a dog, a, 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 a cow can sleep with a horse, a, a man can sleep with a pig, and, 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 and that person will be defended by the law. There are laws, there are laws that will not punish a man if he has sex with a pig. And so God is not pleased, ladies and gentlemen, because we have taken his liberty and have created our own form of religion. Churches all over America 
do their own thing. Denominations do their own thing. We have formed and created our own form of religion. The Bible says in Matthew 16, 16 to 18, uh, Jesus asked uh, his disciples, whom do men say that I am? And, and uh, some said, well, you're uh, uh, Jeremiah. Some say you're Elijah. Uh, some say you're John the Baptist, come back from the dead. And, and Jesus said, but who say ye that I am? And Simon Peter said, you are the Christ. You are the living God. You are the Mashiach which is the Hebrew word for the anointed one of God. And, 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 and Jesus said to Simon, Simon, flesh and blood has not revealed that to you. You didn't learn this from this world system. You didn't get this from the school of ministry. You didn't get this from the uh, college. You didn't get this from mankind. But my Father in heaven revealed this to you. And on this rock, Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to go back to Caesarea Philippi, Matthew 16, 16 to 18, and, and, and claim the words of Jesus. He declared to uh, uh, Peter, on this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Ladies and gentlemen, and, and Jesus said it, and Jesus meant it. And he's going to fulfill his words. He's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. What Jesus Christ said he will do. Hell cannot prevail against the church. But when you take a look at the church in America today, I'm fired up. I feel this from deep down inside my sanctified soul. I, I, I believe God is speaking to us and telling us to get right and get right quick. Get ready and, and stay ready. Jesus said, on this rock, on this rock of the faith that you have, Peter, that I am the Messiah, the Son of God, I'm going to build my church. My church will be built on the rock of faith in my word, faith in me. And hell cannot prevail against it. Hell cannot prevail against it. Ladies and gentlemen, I wrote a book last year called The Giants Are Back. The Giants Are Back. And it's all about... Uh, Satan's plan to destroy God's program, to destroy God's people. How in the Old Testament, Satan uh, heard about uh, the coming of the Messiah, and he tried to destroy the seed of God and uh, put many people to death. Even several occasions tried to uh, prevent Jesus from being born. And once Jesus was born, he tried to kill Jesus over and over again, but he could not prevail. He even put Jesus on the cross and crucified him. But Jesus got up from the dead and, and the grave could not hold him. Death could not contain him. And then we, in this book we look at the many times in history where Satan has raised up demonic spirits to destroy people. Demonic spirits to destroy governments. How Satan had, had pulled down the great Roman Empire the German Empire, the Macedonian Empire, and empire after empire. And now we're looking in this book. You'll find it in the Giants are back, Satan's plan to destroy America. And, and even though people think they're sitting high, they're riding high, they're riding in their limousines, their big, long limousines, they're going to their, their balls, they're dressed up, they're eating scrumptiously, they're eating high on the hog, and they're living in luxury. The bottom is about to fall out, ladies and gentlemen. The giants are back. Satan's whole scheme is to deceive people and to delude them so that they don't put their trust in God. And many people in this nation, ladies and gentlemen, the shame of it all is a lot of them call themselves Christians. But here's the, here's the trick. They are American Christians. And it seems like there's something different about an American Christian. An American Christian can be racist. Oh, I, I hate you because you're black. And, 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 and American Christianity has a history of hatred of black people, how blacks were mistreated, brought as slaves to this country. And even after slavery was over, there were really no concerted efforts 
to educate the slaves and to, to prepare them <coughs> for life and survival in this land. But instead, there were racism, there were Jim Crow laws, there were lynchings and, and, and atrocities, and even to this point in time, there are still a lot of leaders who, who refuse to acknowledge that there even was a Jim Crow era. They uh, refuse to acknowledge that their granddaddies and their great-grandfathers helped lynch people because their skin was black. There are people uh, who refuse to acknowledge that they raped uh, uh, our women and, 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 and murdered our children, even feeding our children as, as, as uh, food uh, uh, to the alligators in the swamps in Georgia and Florida, ladies and gentlemen. And yet, yet, this thing disturbs me, ladies and gentlemen. It disturbs me to the core of my being. And I've asked many white preachers this. How come you guys don't preach against racism? And I get this look from them. And that look means you got the audacity to ask me that. I ain't going to answer that. And a lot, a lot of my, a lot of my fellow preachers are punks, chumps, scared. They've got you, you. Some of you guys got big churches, big ministries, large followings. Uh, 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 you're you're swimming in wealth and prosperity, but you're scared to preach the gospel. Now, how can you call yourself a preacher of the gospel if you only select and choose and pick and choose what? Your people want to hear. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Preach it. Don't be afraid to preach the gospel. Take no prisoners. But some of you are so afraid you're going to lose your following. People are going to dislike you. They're going to stop following you on Facebook, stop sending you their offerings, and stop sending you their tithes and offerings. But ladies and gentlemen, I serve the risen Savior. And if God says racism is a sin, it's a sin. And I, and I reprimand uh, my fellow black preachers. Some of y'all hate white folks. You hate them. And you've got this bitterness in you because of, of what they did to, to your people. Ladies and gentlemen, much of the atrocity going on in America today against black people is being committed against fellow, by fellow blacks. Okay. It ain't white people going into neighborhoods driving by and sticking up uh, uh, the stores and, and breaking into people's homes and robbing. It's our own people doing this to our own. So Satan has deceived a lot of people. The giants are back. But if you're a true preacher, you're going to preach holiness and righteousness, whether you're a white preacher or a black preacher or a yellow preacher. You're going to preach and preach the gospel and stop kissing up to your own kind. I say it now. Stop kissing up to your own kind. American Christianity kisses up to its own kind. When the deal goes down, when the deal goes down, whether it's looking at how Americans treated the American Indian, the Native Americans, how they treated uh, slaves, how they treated immigrants coming into this nation, uh, who goes back on the boat and, and who stays? Or who gets back on the plane and who stays? Uh, 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 do we ship these folks back to China? No, because America is kissing up to China. America has a kiss-up relationship with China. Well, do we send these people back to Nigeria? Yes, because they're black and they're poor. Well, do we build a wall around the Mexicans? Yes, because they don't have anything to offer. All they want to do is take the jobs. And ladies and gentlemen, this is American Christianity making these decisions that are putting down other people. And many of you don't remember where you came from. Hey, we got a president whose, whose grandfather and whose father was a member of the Ku Klux Klan. And, 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 and people, and, 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 and he's not ashamed, he's not ashamed of it. And he's unapologetic. And, and how can you be a Christian and you support somebody who's unapologetic about the way he seduced women, uh, 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 he's, he's lied, he's, he's caused corruption, and, and every, time, every day he wakes up, he gets on Twitter and sends a lie after lie after lie and cover-up after cover-up, 
and if, and, if, and if you don't like what he does, he will fire you and put a gag order on you and, 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 and make sure that you don't speak uh, uh, if you're, you're called to testify. That's the kind of person we're dealing with. And yet, many pastors, many churches love this. This is American Christianity. Wave that flag. Hail to the chief. Wave that flag. Dun, 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 dun. That's hail to the chief. Dun, 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 dun. No matter what the chief is doing, okay, the chief has, has, has been engaged in all kinds of ungodly sexual things. He supported on all ungodly stuff. He's paid money out for cover-up. But that's the one. He's the one. He's going to make America great again. He's going to make America great again. Ladies and gentlemen, America has never been great. Ask Native Americans. Ask the Sioux Indians. Ask the Arapaho. Ask the Cheyenne. Ask the Cherokees. Ask the people uh, whose, whose ancestors were forced to march from North Carolina into Oklahoma. Ask them how great America is. Uh, ask, ask people, uh, the, the descendants of slaves uh, whose families were lynched. Ask Emmett Till's family. Ask many others. Uh, ask Mrs. Luoso's family, uh, the, civil rights, the white civil rights worker uh, from, from Michigan. Ask them how great America is. America has a lot of repenting to do, but, but many Americans are too puffed up to repent. And, and too proud to say, we are sorry. We are sorry about how we treated you. We are sorry. Uh, I'm ashamed of how my grandfather treated uh, your grandfather. I'm sorry. And, 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 and in the church, we keep on saying, Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God anyhow. And keep on socking it to people of color. Socking it to uh, 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 people of, of a uh, different sexual persuasion, socking it to uh, people who, whom we don't like and who don't uh, conform to our image. So American Christianity, ladies and gentlemen, is far, far removed from what Christ intended his church to be. It's racist. It's political. Okay? Somehow, somehow, and Stephen Matson places this out, puts, points this out so beautifully in his book. American Christianity has been identified as white male Republican, white male and Republican, and whatever the white male Republicans uh, say is is uh, good enough for American Christianity. And then the rest, the rest of us, we just try to imitate and duplicate what the white male Republicans do. And ladies and gentlemen, all over this world, I've been on the mission field several times, and it, it <clears throat> bothers me, it troubles me when I go to Africa and I see the many churches that are patterned after the American model. The American model is what they choose to pattern their churches after. I mean, the church uh, leadership, the church hierarchy, it's all based on the American model. And then they, uh, even their schools and their uh, uh, teachings are based on the American model. And, and it's, it's, it's all based on the superiority of white American Christianity. And so, and so, and throughout the years, the missionaries have perpetuated this kind of uh, uh, hierarchy. They have perpetuated this thing until and, 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 and to the place where they set up uh, congregations and denominations in other nations, but the leadership has to agree with the American Christian model. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not Christianity. Christianity is following Jesus Christ. If Christ were to go into a lot of these nations, and he's moving, we just don't get the news about it. He's moving. He's tearing down strongholds, and, and he's getting things uh, set up right. He's flipping the, the script and, and, and turning things upside down. And a lot of people have their eyes open to the fact that the Holy Ghost is moving throughout the world, getting things right, 
whereas in America you don't hear about this because Americans are so comfortable so comfortable that what we're doing is right what we're doing is the right way and there's only one way like like they say when I was in the military there's a right way and there's the wrong way and there's my way that's what Uncle Sam said there's a right way there's a wrong way and there's my way well ladies and gentlemen God is going to have his way in the church. God is going to deal with the racism in the church. How can you, let me ask you this, how can you think you're going to heaven if you hate your neighbor because your neighbor is black? Hmm? Duh. How can you think you're going to heaven if you hate your neighbor because your neighbor is white? Duh. Riddle that to me. How can you think you're going to heaven if you hate Mexicans? How can you think you're going to heaven if you hate immigrants and you want to put the black ones back on the boat and the white ones can stay? Huh? Riddle that to me. American Christianity is exclusive and selective. It is picky and choosy. American Christian Christians, American Christianity chooses what is holy and what is righteous, and everything else uh, isn't. They make their decision. But ladies and gentlemen, the choice is made by God in the Bible. When God says in the Bible that He, this is what He requires. He requires holiness. He requires righteousness. He means what he requires. But Americans think that we're free from the, from the wrath of God. We're free. We can live any way we want to because, you know, hey, you know, the Bible doesn't pertain to us anymore. It's a good book to read, and we can learn some lessons from it, but it has no relevance today. Ladies and gentlemen, you better wake up. Every nation that defied God in historical times is doomed, gone. And, and, and when you look at the history of the nations, God remembered certain nations. And he sent a prophet to remind them and to give them the reason why they were going to be destroyed. And he gave them room to repent. And many would not repent. Ladies and gentlemen, I really believe with my whole heart we're at the point in this nation. We're at the place where judgment is going to come. Judgment is going to come. In Daniel chapter 5, uh, King Belshazzar saw a mysterious handwriting on the wall. A mysterious writing on the wall. Daniel chapter 5. He saw the words, uh, uh, meaning, meaning, uh, you parson. And, and he couldn't figure out what those words meant. And he sent for his uh, soothsayers, his astrologers, his witches. Nobody could interpret it. And then... Daniel came in, and Daniel told the king, uh, these words mean, your time is up. Your time is up. Your kingdom is over. You're through. Ladies and gentlemen, do not be surprised. Do not be surprised if a certain person in America sees the handwriting on the wall soon and, and gets the interpretation, your kingdom's up. And don't be surprised, uh, 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 evangelical, when God knocks on your door and says, your time is up too because you didn't preach my word. You compromise with the enemy. You slept with the enemy. Judgment is coming, ladies and gentlemen. I know this is not your, the kind of sermon you can shout on, you can, but, but I pray that it will wake you up. Judgment is coming, and judgment must begin at the house of the Lord. Just as Belshazzar saw the handwriting on the wall, God's going to allow a lot of people in this nation to see the handwriting on the wall. Already we see it happening all around us. I mean, I mean, this is only March the 1st. We've seen more people die this year than almost all of last year together. Judgment is coming, ladies and gentlemen, and, and people are dying. And, and the sad thing is many of these are church members. Church members, Melanie, they're church members. They've got a membership in a church and claim to know Jesus Christ but have no righteousness. 
and on it not bringing forth fruits unto righteousness. I'm not judging. I'm the preacher. I'm the pipe God blows through. And God wants holiness. He wants a holy nation. And it's going to be a wake-up call for a lot of people who spent all their lives in church, working hard, slaving for the church, and to wind up in hell. It's going to be a great awakening when people find a, and, 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 and discover that a lot of people they thought were in heaven are in hell. And a lot of people they thought were in hell are in heaven. It's going to be a great wake-up call. So the, the call, the urgent call is to turn to the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. Call upon the Lord while he can be found. Get saved today. I'm not saying join a church. Joining a church is not going to save you. Joining a church uh, in, in many cases is going to mess a lot of you up. If you join the church and you have not accepted Jesus as Lord, you're just going through a religious motion. You must be born again. The Bible says you must be born again. Well, how can I be born again? The Bible teaches us in John chapter 3. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. A lot of people in the church cannot see the kingdom of God because they're clouded by busyness, busy work, uh, false doctrine, false teaching. Uh, 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 false preachers, false prophets are leading them. Wake up! Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Tell him that you believe that he's the son of God. You believe he died on the cross. You believe he was buried. You believe he was raised from the dead. You believe that he ascended into heaven. You believe he sat down on the right hand of the throne of God. You believe he's coming back again and that you want to be saved and be ready. And then, and then ask the Lord Jesus to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Then study the Word of God. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. Pray. Pray without ceasing. Develop a prayer life. Go to prayer meeting. Pray, pray, pray unto God. Worship God. And keep your mind fixed on Jesus, make a determination, ladies and gentlemen, that nothing is going to separate you from the love of God. Ladies and gentlemen, when the trumpet sounds, when the deal comes down, that flag that we wave, it's going to be submissive to the Lord Jesus Christ. That flag cannot save you. Playing hail to the chief when a certain man walks up to the podium, is not going to save you. Being his best friend, his bosom buddy, being in his pocket, being on his payroll is not going to save you. Ladies and gentlemen, only your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is going to save you. I know this is tight, but it's right. I know Satan hates this kind of preaching, but it's tight and it's right. Ladies and gentlemen, be careful who you hang out with. In my book, The Giants Are Back, I mentioned that at a certain point in the year 2008, right after the election of President Obama, a secret meeting took place among many leaders. Satan called that meeting, and a lot of leaders, and I mentioned a lot of them in this book, they met at a secret place, and they declared, they swore, they would not support a black president. They, some of them were so upset that a black man won the presidency of the United States. We refuse. We refuse to recognize him as president. We won't do anything. And some big-name senators and representatives, and the Speaker of the House, they mentioned in this book, we will not cooperate with him. We'll sit and watch him, but we will not work with him. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the strategy for eight years. And then when the election came, 
they swore again, we will never, ever, ever again allow a black person to be elected in this nation. That's racism, ladies and gentlemen. That's racism. And, and some of the big name preachers in America are on that list that God gave them. On that list, they cooperated with that strategy. And so what, they, what did they do? They called Obama the Antichrist. And then they, they too, they urged their congregation, don't support this man in anything. We are a white nation. And we will not tolerate anybody leading us other than a white man or a white woman. Ladies and gentlemen, that strategy, that strategy was supported by American Christianity. Now, God is no respecter of persons. Ladies and gentlemen, throughout history, God has used people, white, black, woman, man, whomever he called, rich, poor. He used whomever he chose to lead his people. And he chose, he chose, he chose to, to empty himself of all his riches and glory and to come to earth and live humbly as a man and to die, to die the death of a common sinner so that you and I can have eternal life. And what's he asked us? In return, to trust him, to worship him, and to love one another. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Jesus was asked, what's the greatest commandment? That you love the Lord thy God with all your heart and all your soul, all your mind and all your strength, and that you love your neighbor as yourself. Not just your white neighbor, not just your black neighbor, not just your Mexican neighbor, not just your gay neighbor, not just your lesbian neighbor, but you love your neighbor as yourself. Let the love of God flow. Ladies and gentlemen, let us rise above American Christianity. Let us repent of our sins and our stinking thinking, and let us call upon the name of the Lord, repent, and get saved, ladies and gentlemen, get saved. And if you're not sure that you're saved today, Ask God. Ask God. Ask the world preacher, you think you're better than that? No, no, no. I need, say, a salvation. I'm glad that I have the gift of salvation. I could not get it on my own. Jesus purchased my redemption. He's my Savior, my Lord, my God, and my King, and I declare that he's the way, the truth, and the life. Humble yourself, ladies and gentlemen. Humble yourself. Get right with God. Because judgment is coming. Get right with God. Do it today. And then get your household saved. Get your, your spouse saved. Your, your children saved. Your grandchildren saved. Your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers. Talk to them about Jesus. Because time is winding up. Hey, this is Pastor Leroy Carter. My time's about up on this uh, hour. And I thank you for tuning in. I thank you for being a part of the online church. Uh, I know it's tight, but it's right. Hey, but we preach the gospel. Woe unto me if I don't preach the gospel. Man, I can't preach anything but the gospel and praise God. And not only do I preach it, but I've got to live it. I've got to give an account. So the Bible says, let no corrupt words come out of my mouth, out of your mouth. We've got to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as we know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. And ladies and gentlemen, yes, we get overwhelmed. We get overcome. Satan's got his giants. They're trying to destroy us. But greater is he in us than he that's in the world. The Bible declares that greater is he in us than he that's in the world. The scripture says you have overcome them. We have already overcome every adversity, adversity, every adversary. We have overcome by the word of God and by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So let us be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be faithful. Put on the whole armor of God, ladies and gentlemen. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Don't quit like Kevin, Kevin Wilson says. Don't back up. Don't, he says, get back up. 
Get back on the go. If you get knocked down, get back up. Get back on the go. He said, be strong when things get tough. Don't give up. Trust in the Lord. Don't sweat the small stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. Let's listen to Kevin Wilson one more time. Don't sweat the small stuff. <laughs> 